Good afternoon and welcome to Journal of a Medical Intuitive. I'm your host, Dr. Jennifer Lisa Vass, Medical Intuitive. This is episode five on April 6, 2020, and we're listening to a little background music from Power Thoughts Meditation Club on YouTube, one of my favorites. Today's episode is dedicated once again to the coronavirus. I've been receiving intuitive information about this pandemic from my guides. I first began receiving information on March 24th. This is my third uh, posting about this. So today I'm going to talk about the new information I got about the coronavirus and also review uh, some of the earlier information that I received. Now. When I first uh, tuned into the coronavirus um, on April 1st, my guide showed me a picture of planet Earth and they showed me the coronavirus as this giant uh, energy that's surrounding planet Earth. And so that little image that you see everywhere of what the virus looks like is what the energy looks like around the planet. And so the entire planet is engulfed in the energy of this virus, not just its physical manifestation. And what they said was that this is a manifestation or an outpicturing of who we are right now as a people, of what we've been doing on the planet. And that is uh, maybe hard to hear, but I think we need to hear it. And that is bullying and harming one another. And so uh, what my guides were explaining is that from the, from the higher perspective, from those looking at the earth from the outside, um, our coronavirus energy is an outpicturing of our behavior of harm, of harming one another, of bullying, and of oppressing people. And that it's been going on for so long that we have now created an entire energetic matrix to represent that and that that's taking the form of this virus, which has also now manifested physically on the body of Mother Earth. Now, as a medical intuitive, when I work with people who are sick, they come to me with various ailments, and what I often find is that the illness that a person has is a manifestation of something that's been going on for quite a while in their body, in their life. And that over time, uh, like say someone is grieving for a long time, over time that grief can build up, build up, and then manifest in the lungs. Or somebody can uh, be angry for a very long time, and then that can manifest in the kidneys. And so oftentimes when I look at individual people, I find that their bodies will manifest an illness to get their attention, to get them to change course or to recognize something, to learn something, uh, or to dramatically change their life. And the bigger the illness, the bigger the change that's required in the body. And so people that come to me with very serious, life-threatening conditions like heart disease, MS, cancer, um, these people are dealing with really major life changes that need to be made um, to get better. So we see the same thing happening with planet Earth, that planet Earth is now manifesting this virus, this illness, to get our attention um, so that we make a major shift. And so the purpose of this virus, well, that's not the correct interpretation. I shouldn't say the purpose of the virus, but the opportunity of this virus is to uh, accelerate our shift in consciousness. And so there are a lot of people on the planet who are working on shifting the global consciousness up, people called light workers, healers, star seeds. And then there are other people who are engaged in a lot of harm and bullying and victimization. And, and so we have these two kind of competing energies on the planet right now. Um, Now, although we have this giant coronavirus energy on the planet, we also have this giant light grid on the planet. And the light grid is all of the light workers, all of the people who are 
uh, working to send and connect the lights. And so we have a light grid on the planet, and then we also have a coronavirus energy matrix on the planet. And these are two competing energy matrices, matrices. And, you know, we have an opportunity at this time to choose which direction we're going to go in. Now, one of the things that that the guides told me was that people in other places and other star systems look at planet Earth and they see us as a giant coronavirus, like we're a virus that could infest the universe. Um, We're contagious, or, or they're worried that we're contagious, that our energy of harm, of war, of rape, of um, abuse could be spread to other places. And so I thought this was an interesting way to think about it because um, we tend to think of ourselves as victims. And this is one of the things that has been impressed upon me in these transmissions and these downloads I'm getting is that it's really important that we not see ourselves as victims and that we also not engage in any bullying activity. And so we have to make sure we do neither of those things, neither see ourselves as victims nor uh, perpetuate harm as bullies. Don't oppress anyone, don't get caught up in being oppressed. And when when you look at it from this larger perspective of actually we're the problem, planet Earth is the virus, um, then we recognize that we just have to take responsibility for this virus, all of us. We all have to take responsibility for this virus. We are all um, responsible, and this is who we are. And we have to decide to be somebody else as a planet. Okay, now, the light, you know, because all of these light workers, and by light worker I mean people who are focused on healing and helping and doing and being of service to others, uh, raising the, the vibration of the planet. Some people raise it in their you know immediate environment, and other people raise it by working collaboratively with, with people in other places. Um, because of this light network that's already on the planet, some people have heard of it being talked about as a light grid. The light grid is there. And so there's an opportunity now to strengthen that light grid. And this coordinated light on the planet could promote, um, you know, could, could defeat the coronavirus. And so the potential for the coronavirus is, is that it could cause us to accelerate our work on the light grid. This is an opportunity for those of us who are doing that type of work to accelerate our work. So if you are a light worker of any kind, if you have any gifts, if you are a healer, if you have the ability to help, now is the time to step up and express your gifts and to help. Um, Now, the coronavirus is um, Doing, doing something good for the planet as well in that it is helping the plants and animals. So right now, because humans are staying home and we're taking a break from our patterns of abuse to the environment, it's allowing the plants and animals to strengthen themselves and grow in our absence. And this is very good for the planet. This is very good for Mother Earth. And what's happening is the plants and the animals are strengthening themselves so that they can help us and help the planet. And they're available to help us. And so we have an opportunity now to begin to ask for help from the plant, animal, rock, people, from Mother Earth. We can call out to them. We can um, commune with them. We can ask for their assistance to help us heal ourselves and also to heal the planet. So now it's really important that we find ways to connect with the plants and the animals and the rocks, the crystals, Mother Earth. If you just have a tiny little patch of grass that you can go stand on, you go stand on it now and you ask the Earth to heal you. If you just have one little plant in your house, one little house plant, you go go sit with that plant. And if you have an animal in your house, 
you ask that animal for assistance. And now a lot of people are fostering and adopting dogs. This is great. Um, all of these poor animals who were in shelters are now being, being placed in homes. And that's wonderful because this is going to allow us to heal all of these dogs that we have harmed. All those dogs and cats and rabbits and other animals that are in shelters are there because of human abuse. And we now have a chance to uh, heal them and they also can heal us. Now, um, this is also a time for the star seeds to come together. And so if you're a star seed, you probably already know what that word means. Call somebody else, um, join up with some others. I'm going to be hosting a star seed meeting online. Um, and I want to review now a few of the things that I was told about the coronavirus um, uh, earlier. Oh, actually, no, there's one more thing that I forgot to mention from the most recent download. It's really important in terms of the physicality of this condition, and that is that the virus works on the heartstrings, um, both symbolically and physically. And so this virus affects the heart, and it also affects the emotional heart. And so everybody is suffering, and people are going to be suffering just witnessing other people's suffering. But also, we're going to physically be feeling the effects of this virus in our hearts. And so let me say a little bit more about the physical qualities of this virus. And this will be partially a review of what I shared in March. Um, the virus is um, so potent because it collaborates with other viruses in our body. So if you already have the flu virus, or you already have uh, Epstein-Barr virus, or you already have... Um, some other virus um, from another condition that you may have had in the past and it's gone dormant in your body or a condition that's current in your body then what happens is the coronavirus the novel um, coronavirus 2019 comes into your body and it begins to work with these other viruses and that's why some people just get a little bit sick and other people get very sick and some people die. It has to do with how many viruses were already in their body. Now the way that doctors are seeing this in the studies, if you look at the studies that the Chinese have done of the earliest cases, they found that people with pre-existing conditions in the heart and the lungs and in di with diabetes were had the highest mortality rates and then the people who were over 65 also had the highest mortality rates and um, I think that's because those conditions um, are associated with viruses even if modern medicine Western medicine doesn't understand that yet diabetes heart disease lung disease a lot of conditions are associated with with viruses, dormant viruses perhaps. And also it's because the older a person gets, the more viruses they have in their body that they've collected over time. And that's why it's harder for them to sustain an immune, an effective immune response to this newest virus that tends to collaborate with other viruses. So that's one thing. So, so and the other thing is that this is a virus that's affecting the heart. And right now, what the studies are showing is that it's affecting the lungs. Um, but what they also shared with me is that this is the kind of thing that you don't build an immunity to. You get it, you get better, but then you can get it again. And when you get reinfected, it can be worse. And so I think it's when you get reinfected that it begins to affect the heart. And so what they shared with me in, in the earlier posting was that this condition is very contagious and it's more contagious than we know. And since that first download on March 24th, I have now seen a study coming out of China yesterday showing that they have found that the coronavirus can be transmitted on toilet seats in public bathrooms. And they didn't know that before. And so this is going to keep happening over time. They're going to keep discovering 
more and more ways in which the virus is transmitted. They've discovered that it's transmitted on surfaces and that it can be transmitted by breathing. And over time, they're going to have a greater understanding of this. And this is important because uh, people are taking steps to avoid exposure to it, but people really don't realize all the steps they need to take. So... And, and let me just say, you know, I know a lot of this is really um, hard to hear. And so I'll give my, my disclaimer that I like to give. You know, this is information that I've received intuitively. I recognize that I may be wrong and that my guidance uh, that I may, may have misinterpreted what I've received. And I also recognize that this information can be upsetting for people. But the purpose of my sharing this information is to help and that is the only purpose. I am only trying to help. I've waited five days to share this most recent information because I've been thinking about, um, you know, how difficult it is for all of us to deal with what we're going through, to see all of these people dying. You know, we're at a thousand people a day right now in the United States, and it's very hard uh, for us to see this. And, and so I want to add to our understanding of this virus, not add to our suffering. And that's my intention, is to provide information that I've received intuitively that will hopefully be of help to people. And so I apologize if anything I'm sharing is upsetting to people. And I just hope that this information can be used to save lives and to comfort those who are enduring this. I wanted to share a little bit more of the information that I got um, in the first uh, download. And so I got that it was more contagious than we realized. I got that it was going to be, um, that we're not going to build up an immunity necessarily, but that it it would be possible to be reinfected. And so people need to be cautious and not kind of rush out of their quarantines as soon as they feel better. And I also got that um, we need to uh, really focus on love at this time. That love is the only thing that really is going to defeat this energy of bullying that's associated with the coronavirus. And so we all have to refrain from arguing, from um, treating people as less than or contributing to anybody's oppression. And what I think we are going to see is a growth in our sense of unity as a human population. We're going to begin to see each other as one and to take care of each other. And so, you know, we're going to help the homeless get housed. Um, We're going to help the women who are being um, abused by their partners, their their domestic violence. We're going to address that. Um, We're going to feed the hungry. And... We're going to begin to treat each other like brothers and sisters and sister brothers. And this is how the coronavirus is going to help us to shift to a higher vibration. Another thing that I was told is that, you know, one of the energies that comes with this virus, which just may be obvious at this point, but I I think it still bears stating, is grief. And we are all in a state of grief. And so whether or not you have personally lost a loved one uh, or not, you are grieving. We are all grieving the loss of so many people and so many things. We're grieving the loss of our freedom. We're grieving the loss of our jobs. We're grieving the loss of our ability to see friends and family, our ability to have social lives. We're grieving uh, the loss of our contact with nature. You know, I usually hike and I can't hike and that's, it's hard to not be able to hike. Um, There are so many things that we're grieving, so many aspects of our life that we're grieving, in addition to grieving the loss of life. You know, we're watching on the news people dying every day in large numbers. We have friends dying. We have family members dying. We have people in the hospital who we cannot visit and even comfort and hold their hand and say, I'm here with you. We are burying our dead without funerals, without proper funerals, because we can't be in contact with the infected. There's an incredible amount of grief 
that we are experiencing. And so we all need to have compassion for ourselves and for each other because we are grieving and we are going to be grieving for months. So I just want to end by asking everybody to do everything you can to contribute to the light, to contribute to the love, to do whatever you can to love your fellow human. And if we all do this, we're going to get through this. I'll be posting, I'll be uh, uploading episodes about the coronavirus as the information flows to me, and I will also continue to be giving information about medical intuition more generally. Thank you. 